Hello, I'm Olavi from Amman Amart and you're watching uh, Guitar Mania channel. Hi, I'm Johan from Amman Amart and you're watching Guitar Mania. Is there a personal favorite that you have on stage when, when you're playing that you that you particularly like playing? Raise your horns is fun to play because of the audience reaction. And also it's on the sea of blood. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Because okay. we, we, we threw in that on this tour. Yeah, I think uh, like Johan said, horns is cool because the crowd reaction is always yeah. awesome. Uh, first kill is also cool. Yeah. Talking about the recording and the composition for 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 yeah, your your latest album, how long did it got, did you guys uh, need to to write the songs and who wrote most of the riffs and how being two thick guitarists, how did you work out the parts and decided who plays what or was that only in the studio that that this uh, was decided? I think the writing took I don't know maybe a year, something like that. But you know, I think we got together half a year before we went to the, to the studio that we started to work as a unit but before that you know I'm pretty sure both Johan and me we write stuff and put it on the side and then you know when it's whenever it's time to get together to start working you know yeah. as a band and that's probably half a year when we work together as a band and then I think we gather ideas you know pretty much all the time I guess and you know we divide who plays what is usually who writes what, you know, especially when it comes to the melodies, you know. If I do the melodies on one song, then that's probably because I wrote the melodies and the same thing with Johan. And then for the rhythm parts, uh, at least on, on, on the new record, we both played everything. So we get like two styles because there's, so there, there's no guitar player that plays exactly the same riff, at exactly the same way. Exactly the, mm -hmm. So we actually have, I think uh, I'm probably in the right side and, and, and Johan in the left side. Mm -hmm. So that's why you get more like a live feeling, it gets more dynamics in the guitars because the same riff is played a little bit different. So we actually played everything, both. And in the past we always had one guy doing one riff. But I think this is this was what kind of cooler because we both played everything, and then you get this more dynamic sound on the toes. How much influence did, did your producer Andy Sneap produce the the, the 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 last record? How much did he have, and did he have like some suggestions where he said, "Look, play it a bit a different way," or you could play that? Did he have any influence in that process? I would say some, but not really. He doesn't change riffs really. It's more like you can play it like this. Yeah. It's gonna sound better. And he's mostly doing the sound, you know, how it should sound everything. It's not going in and like no take away this riff and play like this. But also I think he's more involved in the vocals than guitars. Yeah. When it comes to like uh, you know, if you need uh, different words in the lyrics. Because he's, you know, Englishman, so he's he's really good at that, and and also he's good with, you know, try a different way of rephrasing the the, the lyrics mm -hmm. or the, the vocals. Yeah. But when it comes to, I think uh, the Sea of the Gods we wrote, it was pretty much ninety nine percent written, or it was fucking hundred percent written before we went to the studio. So there there was no discussion. We knew exactly what we wanted. And this time around, we actually had two songs that were open that we wanted to have as a, you know, a studio jam. And the way it worked was that we were, because he has this huge room, because when we recorded drums, we all jammed together, except for, for Johan, vocalist. So that's why we can try tempos and, and stuff like that, you know. So, so we... That's the way we record it. But we also decided to have two songs that we kind of jammed. We had riffs for it, but 
you know, we wanted to have the studio feeling of putting together songs. This is an interesting thing that you said because you said you're coming together as a band and then you sort of work on the ideas because there's so many bands that don't do that anymore. They just meet in the studio and record in the studio, but you guys are different in that respect. Yeah, I mean, we, we changed our approach of writing a few years ago. I think Deceiver was the last album we did, the traditional rehearsal room, you know, writing. And uh, the rehearsal place we had closed down after Deceiver, so we, we were like, ah, oh, fuck it, you know. We all have the same uh, home studio, so we just send files and, you know, it's easy that way. But also, for this album, it's probably the, the most, even though we didn't have a traditional rehearsal room, it's the most album we've been working, working as a unit, because we're sending files back and forth way more. Everybody's involved in everything. And also we took like, you know, we rented a cabin in up north for a week when nobody was there except for us. And we had this huge fucking, you know, it was like a fucking seven bedroom cabin. And we stayed there for a week and just fucking nailed our, the ideas we had. And then a couple of months later, we met uh, somewhere else and did the same thing. So I think that was way more productive than than anything. And, yeah, and, and, and just in the old days, everybody went to the rehearsal place like every day. And some days you just sit there and like nobody comes up with something. It's totally unproductive. Mm -hmm. Now everybody gathers ideas at home and then we meet up and just put everything together. Going back to the recording of, of the album, uh, in terms of equipment and amplifiers and guitars that you use, can you talk a bit about that? Now we use campers, Cam okay. both in the studio and also live. So we don't have any speaker cabinets or nothing on stage. Mm -hmm. It's only from the side fields, the stage volume. And then everybody has in-ears. And, and in terms of guitars? I play ESP guitars. My main guitar is the EX model. How many guitars do you own? I don't know. If you mean all. I think I have six ESP guitars. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about you? Uh, right now I'm still playing Gibson. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the shape, I, I think. Yeah, and I like the, you know, the comfortable guitars. How many, uh, how many sounds do you use on the camper? How many do you program? Uh... I only use three sounds. One clean sound, one lead sound that's also based on the rhythm sound. It's the same sound. I only add a little uh, mid-range and a little more gain mm -hmm. and a delay on that. I also have three. I have the, you know, the rhythm and the solo and then an octave. Uh, one question that many of our readers might be interested in is in your tuning. I understand you tuning down the guitar four half steps or five. Even? It's a standard B. Stand okay. And then we have a few songs that we drop the B string to an E. To an E, so have a dropped D like just uh, in a B. Tuning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the, but do you have to uh, do you do that on stage or uh, do you just get handed a new guitar and then it's already in the dropped tuning for, for, for the particular song that you're playing? Depends on the situation. I think uh, you probably change guitar. Yeah, I always get a new guitar that's already in drop tune. And I, I drop it myself. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of warm up, do you guys have any warm up routines? I usually start warming like. A, 45 to an hour, because I need my my left uh, uh, my right uh, down picking hand to get to get to the speed it has to be. What, what what's the highest B, BPM that you're playing? I, we don't really play play that fast. I think uh, uh, Twilight is 192, I think. And it's all downstrokes. Yeah, downstrokes. But it's, the thing is that the first riff is like uh, you're skipping three things. So jumping three strings, mm. and that's but that's the tricky part. Yeah, it takes a lot of uh, uh, discipline. Or yeah, no, precision, yeah, precision. yeah, yeah. And you get you need uh, you need to get the speed. Well, what about you? Are you doing any warm Yeah, I'm probably like twenty minutes maybe before, and I use a little box plug. Okay. So I have earphones. Right. Because I, I, I need to hear 
the, the, the guitar sound like electric. For me it's useless to, to just play a guitar without amp sound. Right. So then I play it totally different. I think I, where I learn most new stuff is probably when we record an album. Because when I'm home I don't really, I don't practice scales or nothing. I mean, that, that is more only like bringing out a song. And then I worry about the technique later. That I can learn. So basically studio. you've got an idea, you want this song to sound like that and you want this riff to be played like that and th then you go about how can I achieve this? Is yeah. This, okay. I'm sort of the same, I would say. I never play guitar because it's fun or try to practice. I only play when, when I write new stuff or I, you know, rehearse or I never... I don't even know how a scale works, you know. Are you kidding, really? No, I have no clue. No way. And that's never been my thing, you know. I, I like to write riffs, and, you know. Well, rock, that, rock on stage. Well, that, <laughs> but then I'm interested how you guys really started playing the guitar. I mean, what made you pick up the guitar in the first place? Really. Okay. And then, how did you go from there? I don't know, just, you know, listen and try to play what I heard. And you play to records, presumably? Yeah, a little bit. Not too much, actually. I have, I've never been interested in learning other people's songs or other band songs. And you're self-taught, presumably? Yeah, I mean, obviously you get, you know, I think to do all these harmonies that we do, there was a friend that learned, teach me how to do them. And that's probably the only thing that I actually picked up from anybody. Ah, maybe like, yeah, of course you get some ideas from MD Sneep or, or whoever, you know, you learn more. But I don't know, I, I've never been, you know, it's not my interest. So when you go home from the tour, you throw your guitar into one corner and you don't touch it until you... I like... touch it when I'm inspired to write. I never practice like a scale or anything like that. Okay. And also, if I have an idea of a song that is too difficult for me to play, I mean, the way I do it, you know, these days when you have computers, you can, you don't have to actually be able to play what you, what you, what you, what you want to play. But obviously that's the starting point, but then of course you need to be able to play it later. So that's, you know, one thing, you, you know, it, it's good because you can actually do a song that is too difficult. But of course you have to learn it when it's time to record it and play it live. But I mean, that's how everybody practices. You start at a low tempo and then you yeah, yeah. tempo up. Yeah, yeah, probably. I don't know. Okay. What about your beginnings? Yeah, you I doing? started... Uh, I was really into Metallica around the Justice for All album. And then I thought to myself, hmm, maybe I can try and play one of these riffs. And I had a friend who had a guitar. So I kind of borrowed it from him and started to try to take to, to play Metallica riffs. Right. And then I bought his guitar and just continued to pick out Metallica riffs. Mm. And after a while I started to make my own riffs. If you were to give one piece of advice to, to young musicians who want to make a living out of, of being professional musicians, what would that be? Well, first of all, these days it's, it's going to be fucking impossible to try, try to make a living out of it. Especially when you're a new band. It takes, you know, it's not, that that should not be the, you know, goal or whatever, because it's really difficult these days. Unless, I mean, it's easier for us that already been around and already, already have a name, you know. For a young band without a record label, putting a lot of money and, you know, tour support into the band is very, it's going to be very difficult. But of course, you're going to play guitar if you want to play guitar. And, but you should never think that's going to be your career. But uh, I mean, yeah, do your thing and, you know, don't listen too much to other people. Trust yourself and listen to your own. Go by your gut feeling. Yeah, when I started to play, it was, I feel it was my biggest passion, you know. I only wanted to play music all the time. That's the way it has to be. You want to play in a band because it's the best thing you know to do. And then eventually if, if that leads to a career, that's awesome. But you have to have the passion that playing is the main goal. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 